Hi, you've clicked on to the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday evening, October 5th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather forecast office for the latest information. Here's Matthew, and this visible satellite imagery is about 90 minutes old as of this recording, but I just want to show you what's going on here before the sun sets. You can see the eye of Matthew moving northwest or north-northwest just to the south here of Great Eczema Island, and you'll note that the eye isn't very clear in appearance. It's rather cloud-filled, at the moment and it's somewhat asymmetric. You can see convective bursts going on in the northeastern eye wall here whereas the southwest eye wall appears weaker to the eye here. And this is an indication that it's still struggling in its inner core to get reorganized after coming off Cuba and that happened earlier this morning and we did talk about how it can take up to a full day for a mature hurricane to recover after crossing the likes of Cuba and uh, we won't have had 24 hours until tomorrow morning so it's still perhaps expected to be struggling at this time but this is some short-term good news for the likes of Great Eczema which may get the northeastern eye wall the most powerful part of the storm this evening winds are down slightly to 115 miles per hour as of the 8 p.m. advisory reconnaissance data not showing any strengthening yet after leaving Cuba the pressure still down to 963 or 962 millibars, just about the same as this morning, and the wind field has weakened some. Again, winds down a tick to 115, but this is still a very powerful Category 3 hurricane, just perhaps a notch weaker for the islands immediately in its path here. But as it uh, moves off this way toward Nassau and Andros Island tomorrow morning, things could change. Uh, this is the current radar picture, uh, very recent from the hurricane hunters flying around in there. And uh, you'll see this very arcing banding pattern. The eye is right here, uh, but this eye wall is not complete. You can see it's open on the south side, and this band, the eye wall actually connects to this larger band on the outside. This isn't exactly a double eye wall situation, but it indicates uh, one of two things, either that there's actually dry air in this slot getting wrapped into the core, or the core is still trying to reorganize a proper eye wall after coming off Cuba. I haven't seen a lot of evidence that suggests this air is actually particularly dry in here, and the water beneath the system is extraordinarily warm at this point and very deep. In fact, some data today indicates that even uh, places where the hurricane has already moved over still have water temperatures above 29 and a half degrees Celsius, which is very, very warm, warmer than this had in the Caribbean. So there's a lot of fuel here uh, that can re-moisten the boundary layer, even if it dries out near the core. So that may not be what's going on. It may still just be reorganizing after coming off the mountains of Cuba. And if it ever closes this eye wall off, uh, it may be able to start re-intensifying. This is the Cuban radar at the moment showing out to 7.40 p.m. As, the, as this video is being recorded. It shows the eye wall trying to close off again. This is just later than the aircraft radar picture showing some kind of wrapping around here of these convective bursts trying to close off the eye wall anew. And again, if that can close off, that helps consolidate heating in the center of the storm, which can lower the central pressure uh, from its current value of 962 millibars. And when that pressure lowers, the winds around the eye wall will start to increase. And this is how the storm could begin strengthening on its way northwest. And this is still a concern uh, because as we look at water vapor imagery again, there's really no shear over the system, a pretty uh, symmetric anticyclone, a little bit elongated north-south, but there really is no shear over the system. And this little trough over the Gulf of Mexico is getting pushed away by the radial outflow out away from the storm toward the northwest. So shear is not a problem for the next 48 hours or so until the system gets up into the area near uh, Jacksonville or just east of Jacksonville, Florida, at which point shear will begin to pick up due to, due to a trough that will be progressing eastward across the country by Friday and Saturday. This is the current NHC forecast track, again showing the storm moving very close to Nassau by tomorrow morning. Hurricane warnings remain in effect for all of these islands. Andros Island, New Providence could get the core of Hurricane Matthew by tomorrow morning, and at this point it could be strengthening again. We'll have to see. It's always hard to tell, uh, but conditions are there. Uh, all that's stopping the storm at this point is itself its own structure at this point. And if it continues to have this kind of look to it, it may struggle, uh, but that's the only thing really stopping it. The environment is pretty favorable. If you look at the track, it gets very, very close to the Florida coastline now, basically on shore by Friday as this approaches uh, starting late Thursday evening, and then by Friday it's over Cape Canaveral 
on the latest forecast track. We have hurricane warnings all along the coast here from Broward northward inland hurricane warnings for Lake Okeechobee and what's not shown here is Orlando also under a hurricane warning. Uh, the track continues up and then you start to see some weakening off of Savannah at this point and that's due to three reasons. One is the increasing shear that we talked about. The other is dry air coming in from the base of the trough. Uh, the third is land interaction with Florida, and there's actually a fourth one, which is that the Gulf Stream, which comes up near Florida, diverts away from this part here, and so the water becomes cooler and shallower right off Jacksonville, at which point the hurricane will start suffering uh, due to less warm water available to it, even if the eye is just offshore. So there's a lot of things that will eventually start weakening the storm up in this area, but until that point, we could be dealing with a Category 3 or Category 4 hurricane coming up near West Palm Beach, uh, Port St. Lucie, Cape Canaveral. All these places along the coast could get direct impacts from the core of Hurricane Matthew. But again, the exact path here, uh, it still could wiggle around this, left or right. We can hope that it comes a little bit farther offshore, but it could also come a little bit farther inland, bringing the core of the hurricane over more towns and hurricane force winds farther inland. So it's not yet clear exactly which counties could see the worst of Matthew. So stay tuned to your National Weather Service office in your local area for the latest information on your particular locale. And it's not just about the wind here either. We've got big problems with storm surge coming. This is the prototype National Hurricane Center storm surge warning from about West Palm Beach area all the way up to the north of Cape Canaveral and then a storm surge watch through Jacksonville and up to Savannah. And we could see inundation up to eight feet in places along the coast here above ground level. So a storm surge, one of the most damaging and life-threatening hazards from any hurricane, regardless of the winds that may come ashore with this. And then there's also very heavy rainfall possible, especially up in Georgia and South Carolina, where this is a bigger problem perhaps than in Florida. We saw what the rains from Joaquin last year did to some areas of South Carolina. So flooding a big concern if the track takes uh, Matthew close enough to the coast that it can impact the coast, coastlines and inland portions of Georgia and South Carolina. And again, the track at this point, this is by Saturday afternoon where it's very close to Charleston, and this would be close enough to bring severe impacts to portions of the South Carolina coast, but this is a little far out still, a couple of days, and so the track could shift around within this cone of uncertainty here. It's not clear yet just how close Matthew will get to Georgia and South Carolina, so cities like Savannah and Charleston. Still a little unsure, but evacuations are underway in some of those places already. And so Matthew could cause big problems in here. And then you see this uh, rather bizarre turn back to the southeast in the forecast. That's something we talked about earlier this morning due to the steering pattern that has been changing in the forecast for Matthew. At this point, it's not worth speculating about whether it could loop back around. That scenario has been shown by some forecasts, but the system would likely be weakening by this point due to wind shear and dry air. So right now, it's really not worth worrying about. This is the big problem obviously over the next couple of days. So again, Nassau, Andros Island, the rest of the Bahamas uh, tomorrow morning and through tomorrow afternoon on Thursday. By Thursday evening, we could start seeing significant impacts to southeast Florida, Florida from Broward County northward with hurricane warnings in effect. We even have tropical storm warnings down in the southern tip of Florida and some of the Florida Keys and watches even for the west coast of Florida as the wind field could bring northerlies or northwesterlies back across the west coast. And so we could see the majority of the Florida Peninsula seeing severe and dangerous weather conditions from Hurricane Matthew. And some evacuations have already begun for portions of the coast. So please be prepared. Please stay tuned and informed with the latest information from your local officials. And please stay safe during this hurricane. I'll have another video tomorrow. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.